Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna Snap Me. Thank you so much for tuning back in. Today we'll study the chapter of a back of the thigh. Now the back of the thigh includes your hamstrings muscles. These are the muscles of the flexor compartment. And what does it mean by flexor compartment? Well, it means that these are the chief flexors of the knee. So we're talking about the knee joint when we're referring to extensor or flexor. All right. So, the hamstring muscles basically consist of four muscles, the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, biceps, femoris, and the adductor magnus. Now, these muscles will be discussed in a separate video. The most important part of the back of the thigh is the sciatic nerve. Now, the sciatic nerve is quite important because it is a very large nerve, and today I'll talk about its origin, course, and termination in the most easiest way possible, to clear all of your doubts, as sciatic nerve can be a quite a difficult topic. So I have basically simplified how to study and learn sciatic nerve. So let's get right into it. First and foremost, it is important to know what the sciatic nerve's origin is. So that is, you can say, point number one. Sciatic nerve basically originates from the sacral plexus. So let me just quickly define how sciatic nerve originates. So the sacral plexus, which is made up of L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3 root values. Each of the anterior primary rami of these nerves give a anterior division, and all of these at the same time also give a posterior division. So why the divisioning? Well, the sciatic nerve arises from two parts: the tibial part and the common peroneal part. So, the tibial part of the sciatic nerve arises from the ventral divisions or the anterior divisions of the L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3. Tibial part, all right? Then we have the common peroneal part of the sciatic nerve which is arising from the dorsal divisions of the anterior primary rami of the L4, L5, S1, S2, S3 of the sacral plexus. All of these are basically forming the common peroneal part. And overall, combining the two parts, the sciatic nerve is formed. And the sciatic nerve is quite a very thick and large nerve. That is the chief nerve supply of the back of your thigh, which consists of the hamstrings muscle. So this was the origin of the sciatic nerve. Now what is the course of the nerve? Let's get right into it. So part one was the origin that I've already talked about. Now you know that sciatic nerve arises from the sacral plexus. That's where it enters the pelvis. Then in the pelvis, part two occurs, which is that it passes through the greater sciatic foramen. That's when it enters the gluteal region. In the gluteal region, there is a muscle called piriformis all right so the piriformis is lying and just deep to the piriformis arises your sciatic nerve is basically passing through the greater sciatic foramen and once it reaches close to the piriformis it goes below the piriformis and enters the gluteal regions so that is your point number three is that it passes below piriformis muscle Part number four is that the sciatic nerve now exits the gluteal region at the lower border of gluteus maximus. Obviously, we all studied in the gluteal region that the gluteus maximus is a large muscle which is covering the entire gluteal region. And all of the other muscles are basically lying beneath uh, the gluteus maximus. So once it comes to the lower border of gluteus maximus, it has entered the thigh. So you can say it enters the thigh at the lower border of gluteus maximus. Now, once the sciatic nerve has entered the thigh, point number five is that it runs with a lateral convexity. And just when it approaches the upper two-third and the lower one-third of your back of the thigh, there lies your popliteal fossa superior angle. So the basically, popliteal fossa is a triangular depression behind your knee joint. So superior angle of the popliteal fossa li lies right over here at the junction of upper two-third and lower one-third of your thigh. And this is where the sciatic nerve, point number six, terminates by dividing into 
its two terminal branches and these branches will have similar names to the parts that originated the sciatic nerve these are the medially the tibial nerve and laterally the common peroneal nerve that's how sciatic nerve ends so you can see here sciatic nerve enters and once it reaches this point it gives a medial branch called the tibial nerve and a lateral branch called the common peroneal nerve so that was basically how point number one to point number six is how your sciatic nerve undergoes origin course and termination what are its branches very easy the sciatic nerves tibial part the tibial part of the sciatic nerve i am not talking about the tibial nerve all right so pay close attention that i am talking about the tibial part tibial part of the sciatic nerve is chiefly responsible for supplying all the hamstring muscles except for the short head of biceps which is being supplied by the common peroneal part of the sciatic nerve so these were your important branches now let's go ahead and discuss a couple of clinicals related to the sciatic nerve so number one clinical of sciatic nerve is the shooting pain through the distribution of sciatic nerve is known as sciatica so sciatica is your first clinical what happens in sciatica is that there is pain in the distribution of your sciatic nerve and more particularly in the common peroneal part of the sciatic nerve since we all know that the common peroneal part goes laterally hence it is going to provide your lateral side of the leg hence the pain will radiate to back of the thigh due to sciatic nerve and to the lateral side of the leg due to common peroneal nerve so the patient usually comes to you complaining that he has shooting pain or current like pain with sudden onset and then it settles and then it comes and then it settles so the shooting pain through the distribution of sciatic nerve particularly its common peroneal branch is known as sciatica sciatica can be occurring due to disc prolapse now this is basically when the intervertebral disc between two vertebras is herniating and this is causing a pressure over the origin of the sciatic nerve which was coming from the sacral plexus this pressure and pinching causes sciatica moving on another important clinical related to sciatic nerve is the sleeping foot there is a part of sciatic nerve that lies not over a bed of muscles rather it is directly interacting with the bone so whenever you sit down on a hard or rough surface sciatic nerve gets pinched and as you can see the sciatic nerve is getting compressed between the bone and your skin this results in numbness over the area supplied by the sciatic nerve mostly the foot and once that happens your foot undergoes a tingling sensation sciatic nerve injuries can occur at the, when there is dislocation of the hip joint or if anybody stabs your gluteal region sciatic nerve can get injured and this can cause uh, a lot of paralysis including the foot drop so that was all for sciatic nerve do not forget to subscribe to my channel thank you for watching